Good afternoon. Before I get started, I want to tell John Michael that uh, I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon to go to Southeast Asia for a three-month vacation. And I'm going to take this with me. I know I can get some kids to laugh and smile at this. And if anybody wants to donate these to me, I'll take them with me and hand them out in Southeast Asia to the kids there. If I can baffle the TSA personnel, <laughs> that alone would be worth hauling these halfway around the world. So my name is Eric Owen, and I am a game changer. I am a game changer because I want to change the world by saving lives. Particularly, I want to put an end to the waiting list in this country that exists for people who need an organ transplant. Now, you may be wondering, why would someone like me, a healthy, middle-aged man, be interested in such an issue like this? In early 2013, I read a heart-wrenching article online about a young woman named Mandy Hale. Mandy was stricken with an E. coli bacterial infection at the age of two. It has drastically affected her life ever since. When she became a teenager, she began to suffer serious health consequences because of that. She lost both of her kidneys. Her story stuck with me for several months. I just could not get it out of my mind because I felt that somebody needed to do something about that. And then I realized, well, I was someone. I could do something about that. But what could I do? And more importantly, how could I do it? I've never done anything like that before. So thus, in honor of Mandy Hale, I created and executed a charitable event I called Life Drive. Now, Life Drive was an event with the overall purpose of saving lives. Different elements of the local community came together to donate and collect blood, to sign people up for the National Bone Marrow Donor Registry, to register people to be organ donors upon death, and people to become living donors. Now, during this process of creating and rolling out the life drive, I realized and I learned many things. Most importantly, I learned what it requires to make a project like that worthwhile and how it can be successful and how anyone else can follow that same process and become a game changer as well. But before I get into those steps, I, I want to speak about a few other things as well. Now, I'm avid about giving blood, and I encourage others to do the same all the time. I often hear people say, I don't like needles. And just by a show of hands, how many, how many people in here enjoy being, getting stuck by a needle? <laughs> Anybody? OK, we have one winner in the back there. <laughs> Security, we might have a drug user in the auditorium. <laughs> So, well, I don't like needles either, but I give blood because I know it serves a higher purpose, and that's saving lives. If someone's child or your child was dying and they needed blood, would you say, sorry, kid, I don't like needles, and refuse to save their life? I don't think so. I don't think anybody would. When I began the Life Drive project, I spoke to a few groups of young people because they're the demographic which can make the biggest impact on saving other people's lives. You know, even though I explained to them that today you're young, you're healthy, you're vibrant, but that's not going to last forever. Your health and your vanity will wane. But my message fell primarily on deaf ears, as you can imagine. Was I discouraged? Well, yes and no. I was discouraged because I couldn't get my message across to those who needed to hear and understand it most, 18 to 25-year-olds, who are the ideal donor candidates. I wasn't discouraged because that's kind of the response I pretty much expected. And as we know, when we're at that age, we all feel invincible, and you know those kind of things aren't on our, aren't on our mind. 
Additionally, I wanted to tell everyone about Life Drive and request their assistance to help saving other people's lives. I was discouraged by both the organizations that I was involved with and with the college here where the venue took place because I was told that I couldn't solicit people to become a donor. I had to wait for them to approach me. But once it was explained to me, I understood why. You don't want somebody to come to be an organ donor unless they're fully committed to do so because if an ideal match is found that they can donate an organ to and then they don't go through with it, it creates false hope for that person who needs that organ transplant. So I had to sit passively by, hope that my message had reached enough people, stay focused on the task at hand, and wish for success. Considering that, I decided that even if I failed and the event failed, that I will have at least learned a great deal about myself, about the event, and other people. And that in itself, I think, was a rewarding experience. So armed with the knowledge that I gained, gleaned from this process, I learned five important steps towards becoming a game changer. And I want to share those with you. First, you have to be passionate about what you're getting involved in. And you have to be passionate because you have to be able to follow your idea through to fruition. Because you're going to deal with things that you never imagined. And so being passionate about your project is going to give you the determination to see things through to the end, no matter what obstacles are thrown in your path. And I'm passionate about the life drive because I want to help improve people's lives. And another thing that you need to keep in mind is that it's okay to be passionate about what you want to do, but you also have to be realistic. Otherwise, you're going to be doomed to fail. In the beginning, I wanted my goal to be finding a kidney match for Mandy. But I, I realized that that was too lofty of a goal. Therefore, I had to keep the life drive to an achievable level. And instead, my goal for the first attempt with the life drive became to change the life of at least one person. Does ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country? Sound familiar? Or what about this? Someone should do something about that. I think we've all heard those phrases before. Which brings me to my second step. You have to be proactive. You have to take initiative. You have to be diligent in order for your endeavor to be a success. Instead of being one of those people that says somebody should do something about that, become one of those people that does something. Educate yourself. Learn as much as you can about the subject that you're passionate about. That way you'll be better prepared to tackle your task and you can inform others. Be prepared to step out of your comfort zone. Me, here, today, it's a good example of that. Because opportunities like this are going to present themselves and you must step up to take advantage of them. Otherwise, you're going to miss those chances. When I first started doing charitable events, I was too timid to speak up in all of my classes. I spoke up in a few that I was comfortable with, and as I practiced this over time, came less reserved. I eventually worked up the self-confidence so that now when I do a charitable event, I speak up in all my classes. I let everyone know. The third step is you have to remain positive. You're going to encounter setbacks, obstacles. There are going to be people who don't share your vision. They're not going to be excited about what you're doing. But don't get discouraged. Because what you're doing, you've probably never done it before, and you're entering territory that you're not familiar with. Just focus on the end result and deal with the hiccups as best you can when they occur. The next step is probably the most important and the most difficult, and that's ask for help. No one can carry out a large endeavor like that on their own. Get uh, assistance from organizations, volunteers, subject matter experts, or anybody who's willing to help you. They're a great source of ideas, suggestions, and networking contacts as well. And not only that, but they might just come on board and help you with what you're trying to accomplish. Now, 
During the process of getting the Life Drive organized, I had some help from some wonderful organizations. Michigan Blood <laughs> allowed me to hijack one of their blood drives and turn it into the Life Drive. <laughs> Gift of Life Michigan, they're the ones who register drivers to become owner, uh, donors upon death, like you have the little heart on your driver's license. That's them. They provided me with a wealth of information about that subject. Be the Match Registry, which registers bone marrow donors. They were extremely supportive of my efforts and those of my volunteers. And finally, the event would not have taken place without the help of my volunteers. They truly were the lifeblood of the life-saving operation. Finally, the fifth step is to get the word out. Try to take advantage of every source of advertising that you can, and if possible, get it for free. Now, when I was promoting this, I appeared in two television broadcasts and two radio spots. And I also had a, a Facebook community event page that one of my volunteers created. And while I was uncomfortable promoting the Life Drive publicly, I soon overcame that because what I did was focus on the message and getting it out there to the public. Even though using traditional forms of media is ideal, you still have to get out there and educate and inform anyone who's willing to listen. And this is where word of mouth comes into play. Take advantage of both formal and informal groups. I spoke to two of my college classes, I spoke to friends, and frankly, I spoke to anybody who would listen. For example, well, and your knowledge of the subjects is gonna pay off in that regard, and for example, one of the arguments against organ donation that I countered was, well, organ donation is not necessary because scientists are growing organs somewhere in the lab. I said, well, that's true, but that's, and there are some promising developments in that area, but that's far off in the horizon, and that doesn't provide any consolation for someone who needs an organ transplant today. And finally, for the most more passive members of your intended audience, you can simply provide them with information they can digest on their own. The Life Drive distributed lots of information provided by the organizations that were involved to would-be donors. So I've shared with you my experience with the Life Drive and that's how it has helped me to become a game changer. And I've also explained to you the five steps necessary to be successful, which are be passionate, be proactive, remain positive, ask for help, and get the word out there. Using those steps, you too can become a game changer. Now in the beginning, I was focused on kidney transplants because of Mandy's situation. Uh, and this is what I learned about that in this process. First, it doesn't require the death of a donor. This can be done by a living donor. When surveyed, 80% of Americans said that they would be willing to donate an organ, but sadly, only, 34, only 30 to 40% of people ever do that. If just 1% of the 318 million Americans would be willing to donate a kidney, then we would have more than 34 times the number of kidneys needed for the 93,000 people currently on the kidney waiting list. So this is a very solvable problem, and that's why I get very excited about this. And this is something that you and I can both do to change the world for the better. You know, I always hear people talk about wanting to change the world, but they either don't do it or they don't know how. This is a way in which it can be done. The second reason I focus on kidney donation is because about 5,000 people die every year waiting for a kidney transplant. And to put that into perspective, it's about 14 people every day, or one person every half hour. So while we're sitting here enjoying these speeches, every time you listen to two people presenting, one person has died. And I find it sad because it's unnecessary. I envision a day when no one ever has to wait for a transplant, but merely has to wait for a scheduled surgery. We could kind of create a type of living donor bank where people are already willing to donate a kidney. No one has to wait. 
Third, no more lives would be put on hold for five to 10 years. That's the typical time that someone waits for a kidney transplant. And after five to 10 years, what happens is the person either gets a transplant or they die. And fourth, I just wanted to save Mandy's life. Today, Mandy is 22 years old. Because of her affliction, she's already lost her kidneys, as I already said. But she's also experienced a stroke, a hysterectomy, and she is frequently hospitalized. I wish that I could have been a, a true game changer by helping her to find a kidney. So instead, I'm asking you to please donate blood, sign up to be a bone marrow um, donor, sign up to be an organ donor upon death, and if you can, and if it's possible, be a living donor, for you may just save Mandy's life. On a final note, I want to say, be safe traveling home this evening. For as much as I'd like all of you to immediately become organ donors, <laughs> it kind of goes against the whole premise of the life-saving idea. Thank you. <laughs>